Hang on a second, that was very quiet. Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the National Motor Museum at Bewley. Now, we're here for a show. Again, the first show of the year, actually. In fact, Bewley's first show of the year. It's everyone's first show of the year here, evidently. But usually when we come to a show, we're looking at vehicles that usually reside from the, uh, from the past. But today, we're here for Simply Electric. Yes, the atmosphere here is Simply Electric as well. But this is a show dedicated to EVs. So as we can see here, first thing we spot, EV style and number plate. And of course, the green little bit on here to mark that is an electrified vehicle. So this is the Ford Mustang Mach E. Literally, this is the first vehicle I've seen here at this show. And the Mach E, at least, as you can see on the uh, on the door, they're trying to go for a double world record attempt. Least amount of electrical energy used in the shortest charge time, as well as doing John O'Groats to Land's End this July. That's something to watch out for if you're interested in EVs. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the Mac E Ford Mustang. It's not my sort of thing. I always prefer the classical sort of shape of Mustang, you know, the muscle car version, but it's obviously going to appeal to some market out there. But I will say I do quite like it from this view. Apologies about the tannoy noise in the background. There's not a lot I can do about that. This is obviously a show and they're talking to all the owners of all these electric vehicles. Of which there are many. Just located up on this embankment here, you've got a BMW i8, or in fact you've got two of them. I quite like the little blue accents on that one in the background. I always thought these are quite cool, they're like a little hybrid. They're powered by a 1.5 litre engine as well as a electric motor which is quite exciting. A 1.5 doesn't sound that exciting in today's world but uh, yeah, they're very cool nonetheless. I rather like the styling of them. I like how this bit here is rather open and you can see through it. That's quite cool. Someone's a fan of Back to the Future I see. Speaking of fans of Back to the Future, I see a DeLorean over there. Obviously going to be an electrified version of it, but uh, a DeLorean nonetheless. Vauxhall Ampera. This is based on a Chevrolet version called the Volt, because of course Vauxhall at this period of time were uh, owned by General Motors of America, so plenty of uh, cars were shared throughout the United States and Europe through Opel, Vauxhall, Chevrolet and Buick and things like that. Uh, but yes, this is the Ampere. I've just, moved, just been speaking with the owner of this car. So it's on 112,000 miles now, still on the original brake pads. So he's never had a problem with it. So yeah, you can't really say much better than that for a car, can you? Fun fact about the Ampere. If you watch the film The World's End by Edgar Wright, starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, as well as Rome's Among Pike and loads of other stars in it. Uh, if you have a look around that, as well as the obvious Ford Granada, there are loads of these in that film in the background. There must have been some sort of sponsorship deal, which was uh, not that obviously made at the time. I do like the logo on this E Nero, like you've got the little E in the plug, and then Nero. That's quite cool. No Robert D Nero here, though. Shame, I thought he came with the car from the adverts, but there we go. Never mind. As you can see, I'm not the only person here filming today, and they've probably got more professional equipment than me. But there's plenty of Teslas here, of course. Porsche Taycan. I always quite like the uh, Taycan. They've done a good job with the styling of it. Polestar 2 here. Battery electric vehicle, it says. 300 kilowatts in a 78 kilowatt hour battery. That's pretty impressive. I've actually had a look at one of these up close, because just haven't had the chance to. Obviously not peeking too much into it because it's someone's private vehicle. But it looks rather nice in there. And of course Polestar is a Volvo company, so you can definitely see the Volvo-esque styling influences in it, that's for sure. Cool nonetheless though. And again, green number plate end. They're a bit controversial because of course people thought, oh what's the point of them? But uh, they do help EVs stand out, especially for uh, EV charging and parking and things like that, which are obviously becoming increasingly more common. Can't go to an electric car show without 
a BMW i3 turning up. Although I will say, I don't think these were that massively popular when they were new. They were deemed to be the uh, future of styling for electric cars when everything does go fully electric, but I'm not sure everyone bought into it as much as BMW would have hoped that they would. It's a bit like the Audi A2 really, it was deemed to be the future of car design and it just never really took off. One of these was quite famously owned by ex-Top Gear presenter and current Grand Tour presenter James May, who I once saw driving it on the, uh, I think it was A34 by Oxford. He possibly gone to see Jeremy Clarkson that day, I don't know. I don't want to know what he does in his life. But yeah, I will say, bold piece of design, not everybody gets it. Of course, if you have a look at the majority of cars here, they look somewhat like their petrol or diesel counterparts, if, of course, they do have one. Maybe it was a bit too bold for people's liking. Of course, it's not just the big kids that can play with their electric toys. Got a little BMW i8 coupe. And, of course, RC cars down there as well. Of course, can't go to a car show without Teslas. The latest one in Tesla's range, the Model 3. The smallest and the cheapest of the Teslas currently. Didn't know they had stick-on front number plates. That may be just something that the uh, owners of these two here has done, but uh, certainly fits in with the look. Probably a bit more aerodynamic as well, rather than just having a, uh, a slab of plastic on the front. I will say what I do like is how the little camera just here on the side, that's all blacked out and the handles are all blacked out. Wood styling in there. Obviously very reminiscent of Rover. I probably just upset a load of Tesla fans in there. Oh, the screen's just come on. The sentry's been activated. Run away. I'm going to be shot. That's the thing with Teslas. They do have a little sort of security system on there where if they think something's going to happen to the car, the cameras will activate and record it. So I'm imagining the owners of these two are probably going to come home, have a look at their system and see a load of people going, oh, what have you got in here? And have a look at the tablet and all that on the, uh, on the dashboard. That's quite funny when you think about it, really. Anyway, if you're watching this and you own this Tesla, hello. Look forward to having me on your little CCTV system on it, basically. Speaking of electrified things today, we've still got the monorail. Oh, poor dog. Now, moving on to Jaguar. Jaguar is a company that's traditionally made its name in internal combustion engine cars. Big, powerful, muscly things, you know. So, a move to an electric vehicle is a bit odd for them, but it's a move that was pretty much necessary, really, because obviously with uh, the ban on petrol and diesel cars in many countries sort of coming in reasonably soon, actually. I think the earliest is about 2025. Here in Britain, it's 2030. But yeah, having to look to an electric future was almost inevitable. So here's Jaguar's attempt, the I-Pace. I have to say, I rather like the blue on it. But look how big the wheels are. How big are these rims? 20 inch rims. Wow. I will say the interior looks rather lush. <laughs> That's going to get dirty very quickly. The MG5 is a completely 100% electric vehicle. There's no sort of hybrid technology going into it and there's no petrol or diesel version of it, at least not in the UK. So I think they've done quite well to make it look like, you know, just your general everyday car. Some companies try to go a bit overboard with the design of electric vehicles to make them stand out and show it as something special, a la BMW i3. But I think MG have done quite well to keep this sort of understated. It's not trying to alienate people from moving to electric vehicles. Of course, this does look quite different to other vehicles in the MG range, and that's because it's based off of a car that MG haven't designed themselves. This is based off of a Chinese car called a Roe. I can't remember the model number personally, but uh, I don't think it looks too bad, really. It looks a bit high, it could be a bit lower, a bit of an arch gap, but uh, other than that, I rather like it. You have a large SUV EV. That's a bit of a mouthful. The Audi e-tron S. Looks rather nice. Rather like these large rims. What are these in terms of size? 21 inch rim. Crikey. Have a look at the interior. 
rather modern, stylish, chic even. Quite like the orange accenting around the, uh, around the logo. There's another Kia E Nero. Again, no Robert De Niro with it. A Nissan Leaf. These come a long way in terms of design. Before they were rather sort of rounded and odd looking, but now they've actually got quite nice proportions to them. Quite like how it goes up and round there, and obviously this is just a panel, but I like how it just sort of all fits in with the glass. That's quite nice. Pat yourselves on the back, Nissan, you've made a good looking car. Of course, you've got Porsche here, repping the Taycan in both sort of standard sort of saloony hatch side of style, coupe, whatever you may want to call it. And also shooting brake. This particular one is a e-hybrid. These cars here are brought here from the Porsche Centre in Bournemouth. This is rather cute and quirky and funky, especially in bright orange. You don't see many cars in bright orange these days. It's a Chinese built EV, obviously built for two people, mostly for cities I would imagine. Jaiwan Idola electric car. That's what it's called. Notice the fog light on there is an aftermarket edition. If you want to know how to fit one of those, see my video which I posted a couple of weeks back. Link will be probably somewhere in the description or up top of the screen. It does have a little reversing camera though just down there. Not that you'd probably need it with a car of this size, but interesting nonetheless. I have to say the practicality side of it, pretty good despite the size. You know, it's not a huge car. It's probably about the same length as a Smart 4.2. I rather like it actually. 12 inch rims, same as my Mini. Of course, it's not just cars that are being phased out, is it? Over time it's going to be all combustion vehicles, so bikes are also going to be electric as well. What does it say on it? ZF Lithium Ion 14.4, crafted in California. This is the Zero SRF if you're possibly looking at electric motorcycles to buy for yourself. I quite like the styling of it. It's not too unconventional and yet not too sort of outlandish and out there. Another Nissan Leaf. Looks quite nice. The Peugeot E208. I like how it's got this little sort of greeny tints to the uh, to the badge or bluey tint, whichever lighting you're looking at it in. Sort of helps signify that it is an electric vehicle. Hopefully should be doing a walk around in one of these fairly soon. So uh, if you're interested in the Peugeot E208, Keep an eye out for that. I'll go into a bit more detail when that time comes on these, but uh, I think they're a pretty good looking vehicle. I do rather like these uh, saber tooth style of uh, lights on it. Peugeot are rocking it these days, they're looking pretty good. There's yet another BMW i3. I do like this blue with a black contrast, that is rather nice. And a Renault Zoe. Probably one of the better vehicles in terms of their uh, real life range being fairly close to what it is on paper. Also probably one of the better value for money with electric vehicles at this current moment in time. I'd also not necessarily the most stylish vehicle in my opinion. Everyone else is going to have a different opinion. But uh, yeah. If you're looking for a function for an electric vehicle this will be the one to choose basically. Also, you can see from other events here, there's quite a bit of rust on the floor, so clearly some cars that have been, have been uh, rusting away as, uh, as events go on. It's not the best thing. Yes, another electric motorcycle, another Zero. As well as fully electric vehicles, you've also got a selection of hybrids here as well. This is a Lexus hybrid, the RC300H. This is the F Sport version of it. I like how the interior on it is still fairly classical, especially with that old style of clock in the uh, center of the dashboard in between the two air vents. Not sure if you can see it too well on camera. I can't see the screen on it at the minute because of the lighting, but uh, yeah, it looks rather traditional and quite cool in there. Obviously it's jam packed with technology as well, being the latest sort of thing, but uh, I think it's rather cool, especially in this design. I'd quite happily have one. Another gorgeous blue BMW i3. MG ZS. I do like the grill on those, that looks rather cool. 
Listen to how noisy it is when it's leaving at this night, it's really quiet. It also comes with a very competitive seven year warranty. That's probably the noisiest element of it, the horn. The Volkswagen ID3. Yes, I did just say Volkswagen, because that's obviously what they call themselves. They tried to make a joke earlier and it didn't quite go to plan. But anyway, these things, rather unique in their styling. They look like a rather squashed sort of polo and golf well mashed together, really. I like the little spoiler on the back, that's quite cool. Large wheels. The interior is rather, rather lovely on this. If you want to see a full in-depth review of one of these, go and check out the Furious Driving and Lloyd Vehicle Consulting YouTube channels because they've done full-on reviews of this car. I quite like the uh, white badge on the front. That's a different turn from Volkswagen. Looks cool. Of course, this is attracting a lot of attention. A DeLorean DMC-12. This will have had a full-on electric version, because of course there is a company now in Texas which is making these brand new and fully electric these days. I'm not 100% sure if this is one of those cars. But either way, it's something different, something very, very quirky. Of course, fully stainless steel body on it, so the at least the top half of it won't rust. Fiberglass underpinnings as well, so again, a vehicle that won't rust. Obviously, throughout its history, a vehicle that is uh, steeped in uh, controversy due to the way the company of DMC was run. But nonetheless, a very cool car. Obviously found its fame through the Back to the Future film franchise. There's a bit of a theme of blue going on with this car. But this is who this particular one was built by. It's obviously a bit of a resto mod. I do love the rear lights on it, that looks quite cool. And it's got a reversing camera as well. I haven't even spotted that. Goldwing duels will always be cool. Very blue interior. I like the little gear stick style thing. You've heard of LEVC, London Electric Vehicle Company, with their modern range of hybrid based taxis. Well, this is a fully electric classic London style taxi with very offset coloured green rims compared to the uh, grey metallic body. Obviously this was not done on a industrial scale in the same way that LEVC do with their taxis and I think either currently producing or upcoming vans. But yeah, certainly something different. It's not a vehicle you'd really consider changing to electrics. Of course, they're all sort of being taken off the road slowly, but uh, yeah, I think changing out the old diesel in these things for a fully clean green electric motor was probably a good choice. Especially considering many cities are now introducing uh, low emissions zones and things like that, which are obviously going to cost more. So therefore, this sort of thing create more profit for the taxi drivers. VW ID4, obviously quite a bit bigger than the ID3. They kept it simple with the names you see. The larger it is, the higher the number. It's like an SUV star thing electric scooter next to it. Cool. How can you miss out on Mercedes as an electric car show? Of course, they're going fully electric as well. They've even got an entry in Formula E now with uh, Stoffel Van Dorn and Nick De Vries driving for them. This is the Mercedes EQC. It's rather cool, rather large. Not a big fan of SUVs as I've already said, but uh, Certainly something very different. YouTube Peugeot E2008, yes, another sort of SUV type thing. Rather like the colour and the styling. As I've said already, Peugeot are just nailing their styling at the minute. Never one of Peugeot's largest fans, but you can't deny. It looks good. Also, here we have a Peugeot van disguised in a Vauxhall badge. Of course, Vauxhall these days owned by PSA, Peugeot Group. Some electric bicycles, they are completely free time to go on. And These are usually a bit cheaper than their Peugeot counterparts. So, if you're looking for a electric van of any sort, maybe consider getting one of these. As you know, I rather like my commercial vehicles. And this, this is a fully electric commercial vehicle. So, in my book, it gets a thumbs up.
This is a Deus 3 E10, it's based upon the Peugeot E208 sort of platform, as you can tell by the size and proportions of it. However, it is slightly jacked up a little bit to sort of give it that SUV-esque style. Think of it in the same sort of way as a Dacia Sandero stepway. It's a little bit different, obviously got that sort of signature DS styling shark fin type thing on the side here. Interior, very similar to the E208. Can't see it all into the rear window, you can probably just see me. Hello. But yeah, it's not a bad looking vehicle. It's very, uh, very different to the previous generation of DS3. Of course, the very small little three door one. That was quite cool and chic. Can you tell what this is? Can you see any contrasting colours that make the badge stand out? I can, it's the Kia Soul with red. No idea why they've had the badge red, but either way it stands out. I mean, I've noticed it at this show. It's quite a sort of traditional style, this one. It's a bit more sort of a, a van like back end, if it were. Notice how the... Uh, the rear alloys, or not, not rear alloys, all of the alloys even, have got sort of like little aerodynamic features in that. That's just so air resistance is reduced and that means greater range on these cars. It's little innovative ideas like that that make cars really stand out. I mean, Kia are not the only company to do this, but it's one of those that are certainly more prominent on this car. These are always sort of likened to looking a bit like a fish with the previous generations, but uh, Kira really starting to go quite a long way in terms of the styling. I especially like the light bar all the way around the front. Very neat. Here's one of the older generations of Nissan Leaf. Fun fact about this, they had to sort of develop the lights in this shape for a reason. And that was because when they had the wing mirrors on here, these are just standard mirrors from I'm not sure which car it is in Nissan's range, but it's one of them, one of the standard combustion cars. But yeah, when they were driving this during testing, they got a lot of wind noise from around here. So these headlights have been designed specifically to deflect the wind away from the door mirrors. Rather a little interesting and unique feature of these cars, especially which sort of gives them that bug eye look. I still prefer the styling of the newer Leafs though, personally. It doesn't look too bad, I think it's aged reasonably well, but it'll obviously be seen as a, a thing of its time in years to come, I'm sure. Yet another electric vehicle that's a van. The Nissan NV200. Again, with aerodynamic sort of alloys. These are rather cool and quirky, very different. It's got a very long front end. That's my takeaway from it. Yet another Renault Zoe there, one at the back, another Kia Enero. But over here, just in front of me, you may have just caught a glimpse of it. Probably my favorite cars here, the Honda E. Obviously based off of a classic design of Honda, based off of the old Honda City, which used to be able to carry the uh, Moto Compo little uh, two-stroke motorcycle scooter type thing. But these look really cool. They look really cool in concept form. And obviously they had to dial some things back, such as not having light up Honda badge. But uh, definitely looks really cool. I rather like it. It's probably my favorite of the uh, modern range of EVs out there. I especially like the way that the dashboard is just full length as such. Everything just sort of goes from one side of the car to the other, including the screen. You can have sort of mood screen in there, like a little sort of fish tank. It's a cool little car. Also, Honda have tried to be different with it. They've given it door cameras rather than door mirrors. Again, rather unusual, but yeah, rather cool. It's obviously looking to the future. However, I'd hate to think what would happen if one of these cameras would break and how expensive it would be to replace them. Because of course, this is the widest part of the car. So the likelihood of that getting knocked is greater than say, the front wing or the front end or whatever you know i will say i do like the interior styling of this very cool i also like it in white it looks really good again probably my favorite car here the honda e i especially like these sort of little gas hob style wheels on this black honda e 
These look really cool in my mind. Those would be the wheels I'd have if I was buying one of these. Not that I will be any time soon because they're not exactly uh, affordable for me at the minute. I'm saying something to look at potentially in the future if I ever do go electric. Well, I will have to at some point in my life, I'm quite sure. But uh, yeah, definitely something to look at. Especially they make it uh, even better when they do the next generation of these because of course there will be a next generation. It's just a matter of when, not if. But look at his cute little face. Look at the little lights, the eyes of it. The badge, the nose. It's just so cute. You just want to mush its little face together. The Hyundai Ioniq. Look how very flat the front is. There's no real grill to it. Just this slab on the front. Obviously colour contrasting grey. Helps it stand out a bit, like a grill would do anyway, being a usual black colour. But yeah, you see quite a lot of these on the road, but they just look so ordinary. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it, really. It's not good, it's not bad in my mind, it's just there, it blends into the background. We have a Mitsubishi plug-in hybrid here. Take a good look at it, because of course Mitsubishi are not going to be sold in the UK for much longer. They may have already pulled out, in fact. This is the Outlander PHEV, petrol hybrid electric vehicle. It's quite a mouthful. And again, as I said before, this sort of thing, not my cup of tea, but uh, I'd like to admire it for what it is. It'll have its fans out there for sure. The Hyundai Kona, the Kia e-Nero's Hyundai sibling. I prefer the Kia person in terms of the looks. Another VW ID3. I will say I do love the colour on this one. Very neat, it's like a little turquoisey colour. Nissan Leaf and another Ion E cup there. And a guy trying out an electric powered bicycle. That's rather cool. Wonder if I can try it out. So let me tell you a little bit about this bike. It's called a NAP. I'm not sure what the model's called. Apologies for any camera wobble, it isn't the smoothest track in the world. But yeah, it's called a NAP, it's a Dutch bicycle. Of course the Dutch are rather into their cycling in their towns and cities and things like that. But as it turns out, with uh, Simply Electric here, yes I can ride this bicycle today. That's rather fun. It's designed to look a little bit like a sort of everyday motorcycle. I suppose, obviously, without the engine in the middle. Because it has absolutely massive tyres, the comfort on it is actually rather reasonable. I know the camera's shaking around a lot, but from here where I'm sat, it's very comfortable. We've also got a nice padded seat as well. It's rather cool. The controls on here are all rather simple and logically laid out as well. To my left, you've got the power delivery control. Either turn it fully off so you just cycle. You have more power, which obviously means more speed, less range in the battery, of course. And then, of course, you've got lower power, which does the opposite. You've got your gears to your right, which actually look really quite cool. They're Shimano gears. This is your power control. You've got on and off. So if I see you either cycle with or without electric power, you've got power up, so obviously more power, less range and all that stuff, or you've got less power and less range. That's something different, well, compared to what I'm used to anyway. But look how big and chunky the tyres are. They're absolutely massive, which provides a lot of comfort on here. I've also got this rather large seat underneath my arse at the minute, which I'm not going to show you because uh, that would be a bit difficult. But yeah, you've also got a nice little display here telling you exactly how quick you're going, what level of assistance you've got. I'm in level assistance 5. No idea what that means, probably highest. If I press that, level of assistance 4. Very nice. And we go around here. These are your gears. So go up, just press this button here where my thumb is, and down, you just push that forward. We'll do one more lap, I think. You also got a nice large light on the front here. It's all rather cool, this. I wasn't expecting to be uh, doing a sort of ride-along review of an electric bicycle today. But there we go. Here I am. Let's go for power delivery 5, shall we? 
There we go. You also get a little bell. See? <laughs> it's good fun, this. So we are max power delivery. Top, well, not top gear yet, but we will be in a minute. Now we're in top gear. It's a nice bike overall. I'll show you some externals in a moment. We'll talk a little bit more about it. <laughs> Despite being comfy with the big wheels, it is still quite firm. There's actually no suspension on this, it's just a solid frame. Let's just stop here at the edge of this little track. We can discuss the bike. So this is the bike then. As I said, it looks rather like a motorbike, little scooter, moped type thing. The motor is mounted inside the rear wheel. Shimano gears I've already mentioned. Massive tyres, not quite sure how big they are. 20 by 41 and a bit. Or four and a quarter, I'm not sure. Can't really read it that well. But yes, NAP, Dutch company. Very big lines on the front. Battery pack located under here. But what's quite cool is you've got a little feet stand for rear passengers because you can have two people on this bike. That's quite cool. It's only got enough power behind it. As I've already mentioned though, front brake, rear brake, your gears, currently in fourth. I'll lower that before riding off again. And then you've got your power delivery as already mentioned. Nice screen, easy to read. It's quite good. I'm not sure if this has got regenerative braking. I would imagine it does with the uh, rear hub. But there we go, something unexpected at Simply Electric at Beaulieu today. Wasn't expecting to have a little ride on an electric bike, but there we go. Also just noticed a rear light. That's quite cool. So these are ZFI bikes, powered by a little Bosch motor. Obviously have a top speed of about 15 miles an hour, 15 and a half, something like that, according to UK legislation. This one's extra cool because it's got a little trailer it can tow. So all those bikes just down there are run by the hub and delivered by Zedify. So if you're ever interested, check out the hub. They're based in Southampton. Of course, a big thank you to the hub for letting me try out the NAP bicycle. Something very different, that's for sure. I've only ridden an e-bike once and that was on a holiday, so it's quite fun to go and test one. Probably one of the most stupid things ever to exist, but one of the most utterly brilliant as well. Tesla though. <laughs> Whilst we're here then, we appear to be in Tesla Alley with plenty of Model 3s. A couple of Model S's at the back. Again, love the blue on that one, just at the back with a bike rack on the roof. Certainly plenty of them. Of course, you can never go to a car show without a Tesla, which I've said a couple of times now. Model X, seven-seater, would you believe? Another Model 3. Ooh, I like the red on this Tesla Model S. That's very neat. I do like my red cars, as you can probably guess. <laughs> yeah, look at all these Teslas. It's crazy. Oh, and you know we mentioned the uh, Vauxhall Ampera earlier. Look what I've just found. A Chevy Volt. Of course, it's American Cousin. You don't see that many Chevy Volts in the UK. I mean, <laughs> you don't see many Vauxhall Amperes either, but you see even less Chevy Volts. But yet, here is one. Today is about looking at things you don't usually see, looking towards the future as well with the electrification, and I certainly think we're getting a lot of that today. This i3 is on the way out. Another Mitsubishi, another Hyundai. And of course, whilst we're here, how could we miss the Mini E? I still think they missed a the trip by not calling it the Min E, but okay, whatever floats Mini's boat. I do like the Union Jack real tail lights, that is quite cool. Sad that it hasn't got these sort of uh, UK plug style rims or alloys. That's rather upsetting, but there we go. I do like these actually, just because they're they're just mini, you know, they're not trying to be anything else 
come on, outlandish, anything massively different. It's keeping in style with Mini. The only real difference is the grill, but even so, they've added that sort of uh, that sort of lip to the well, the petrol and diesel version. So, unless you knew by seeing the badge and obviously the green ended number plate, you wouldn't tell this is a fully electric vehicle. Of course, it's got the same sort of power as a Mini Cooper S. It's safe to say then, it's pretty quick and the future looks bright for Mini with things like this. Of course you can't come to Bewley just to see an electric car show without going into the museum itself. But we have done a walk around of this museum already once before, so if you're interested, the video will be linked. Uh, but we're going to keep an eye on mostly the electric side of things with this, so let's go and have a look see what electric vehicles we can find. So far we're not doing very well in finding electric vehicles here in the museum. And yes, the mask is obligatory. Just when I was thinking we weren't going to find many electric vehicles in here, we found this. The chassis of a Tesla Model S. This one's had a little bit of an accident, as it turns out in this picture just here. Yeah, it looks a bit nasty. But this is pretty much the underside of an electric vehicle. Indeed, the internals of it. See the battery just located in there, all the cabling, rather thick, needs to be for all that power. Electric motor at the rear. And obviously, all of this down here in the front. Normal size car battery though for obviously uh, standard things. Apparently this one here has been modified by Fashion Research to expose the high voltage electrical system features including the first responder loop, electric drive motors and high voltage cables as well as the onboard charger. As mentioned before it's not just the big kids that come here to play. You can also have this for your little kid obviously, museum don't touch the exhibits, but this is an electrified Mercedes 300 SL for kids to drive in. Look at the controls, very simple, also because I got the small camera today. Look at all that, it's very sweet. I love the classic wild rim wheels, those are awesome. And little uh, chrome cap, hello, see the camera. Yeah, this is very cool. I'd have loved this as a kid, quite frankly. However, uh, one thing I did have as a kid was one of these, the Little Tykes Cozy Coupe. Without the eyes, I'll add the older style of one. But very many happy hours I had in one of these. Obviously not electric at all, but there we go. We've had a look at this at the last time we came to Bewley, but this is the Harrods One Ton Electric Van just used to uh, sell Harrods merchandising basically. Got a three and a half horsepower electric motor, 18 miles an hour top speed. And it wasn't marketed because it was built just for Harrods. The more you know. This is a 1947 brush pony electric milk float. I can imagine many people were woken up in the early hours of the morning by one of these. You can't come to an electric vehicle show without mentioning one of the greatest failures in history, the Sinclair C5. However, I will say with this thing, it's probably more relevant now than it ever was, because of course we're moving into an age where uh, electric cycling is becoming more and more popular. I mean, you see me riding the electric bike today. Obviously it was done in the style of a recumbent bicycle, which in the 1980s when this was released was not that common. So. Yeah, it never really took off, but recumbent bicycles these days are reasonably popular. And of course, EV tech as well. Yeah. Clive Sinclair was certainly a visionary, and maybe his vision for this wasn't that great in 1985, but in 2021, who knows, it may well have sold exceptionally well. We are talking hypothetically there, of course. Also, if you have a look in the background, there's a Tesla. Roadster version even. Next to the C5, just a quick shout out. This one is not electric, however, there are companies out there now which do sell PLP50 kits. You can either build yourself or pay them to build them. And you can have one available with an electric motor. So if you're ever looking for a tiny, chic little car, consider the P50 EV. There we go. 
we just come round to the world of Top Gear where they're always changing the exhibits based upon which series have been and gone over the years. This one's from the latest series of Top Gear I believe and this is Mr Nippy as driven by Paddy McGuinness. Obviously it's a classic Bedford van, CF van I believe. And it's an ice cream van, obviously Mr Whippy, Mr Nippy, you'll get it. But underneath all this is Tesla power. Yes, this is powered by Tesla batteries and motors. It's quite a change from the uh, standard way it would have been, but uh, yeah, definitely looking to the future for electric ice cream vans, I suppose, in a weird sort of way. Can't have a notice though, those on there are mini indicators. Couldn't come to Bewley without having a little bit of a ride on the monorail, basically. Oh. And the best thing is, I've got a carriage all to myself. This is one benefit of the coffee boy times, I suppose. So yes, the monorail is also an electric vehicle, so I thought, why not? Let's go on it. It fits in with the theme of the day quite nicely. Also, you get a good view of the museum, as you're about to see. We've just been down there. It's not easy to capture everything on both sides. But look, F1 car. What F1 cars? Hello, people down there. And on the other side, and over here, still got the electric displays going on. Not as many cars now because many people have left. Still all good though. You can see the atmosphere here is thriving today, which is great considering, well, everything this year. I think being on the monorail brings a nice and it's electrified close to this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed Simply Electric of Geely. It's been their very first uh, first electric vehicle events here. I certainly enjoyed it. It's certainly been different seeing things from the current crop of cars and of course things that are coming up sort of, well, looking to the future really, seeing what cars will be driving in about five years time, whatever it is. So uh, yeah, hopefully you have too. So if you have enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, comment down below, let me know which has been your favourite EV of today. I think I've made it obvious which one was mine, quite frankly. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more car based content and show reports and things like that, feel free to subscribe because there's going to be plenty more of that in the future. So until the very next video, guys, for now, I shall say farewell. <laughs>